right, so here we are. Um, it's the 25th of August and there's a lot of speculation going on on social media and elsewhere that Phil Hogan will survive. Just to put this into context, Phil Hogan has, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not even bothered considering the specific role that he has in Europe, but he has some very well-paid sinecure in Europe where he gets lots of taxpayers' money and he fucks around the way they all do. Now, um, the problem or the contentious issue that people are having with Phil Hogan is that he attended the controversial golfing dinner for 80 to 81 members of the Oireachtas Golf Society, uh, judge of the Supreme Court, and so on. Um, and there are calls for his resignation. I want to say this unequivocally now. Phil Hogan will survive. I knew that from the start. I wasn't bothered doing a video until now. But Phil Hogan will survive. Um, I was a secondary school teacher for 11 years. I also went to a private fee-paying secondary school in the late in the mid 1980s and late and early 1990s. And both having gone to a psychopathic control grid and worked within a psychopathic control grid as a teacher, and the vast majority of Ireland's secondary schools, if you're listening in North America, high schools, operate very strictly and very classically within a psychopathic control grid. Every school I taught in and the school I attended had at least one Phil Hogan in it. it might, that doesn't necessarily mean it was a man. In my own secondary school, it was a woman. And these are people who openly behaved abominably towards others, yet they always got away with it. Um, seeing that context of the secondary school, if you see a secondary school as a country, and you see the Department of Education or the larger political forces, the teaching council, the politicians, that kind of thing, the boards of management, if you see them as the multinationals or as the globalist institutions, including the European Union, then you see that that structure actually transfers exactly to the way Ireland is governed. Governed. So in every school I taught in, and I mean everyone, there was a Phil Hogan on the staff. If there wasn't a Phil Hogan on the staff, I made it my business to become the Phil Hogan of the staff, because if I didn't, some fucking, somebody fucking else would. So these people are a pain in the bollocks to deal with in a staff room. They're, the other teachers fucking hate them. The kids hate them. <clears throat> it sounds like Jerry Bottomer was one of those in the school he taught in. Just reading some of the remarks made about Bottomer on social media before I got thrown into Twitter jail for saying something or telling Jerry Bottomer to fuck off and die. But there is a Phil Hogan in every school. And they... What the Phil Hogan's understand is that it is a rare day, it is a blue moon, it is a hen's tooth indeed, when somebody is really willing to force them off the staff, or really willing to take them on. Hogan knows that. You cannot blame a pig for grunting. You cannot blame excrement for its smell. So you cannot blame Phil Hogan for being Phil Hogan. What you can blame is all of those others who are his enabler or enablers so for example you know concannon's bots came out in full force saying you know we need phil in europe i don't know why i don't know why we need phil hogan in europe but again it reminds me of those teachers in school who were the difficult gene these boorish loutish teachers were difficult geniuses a lot of them a very large proportion of those teachers fitted into the uh, psychopathic category of the difficult genius they were incompetent teachers. They were incompetent teachers when I was in secondary school. They were incompetent teachers as my colleagues. Um, I never really... I mean, they were there, and I had to teach my own classes. The way that I showed them up was by being better than all the rest of them. I was a very good secondary teacher. I focused on literacy. I focused on vocabulary. I drilled my students. I taught English primarily. I also taught history, some Irish, and some other... When you'd be in a secondary school, you might be given one or two other extraneous subjects. But... My my main teaching subject through my career was English, and it was a, a subject I found extremely easy to teach, as was history. But English was a piece of cake to teach. I never had any difficulty teaching it, but there was a Phil Hogan in every school I taught in. And nobody was willing to take him on, least of all the boards of management, 
or the people who are you know behind the control at the school and um phil hogan is one of those and that difficult genius mantle that he's using and that his enablers and cronies are using is oh well we need phil in europe i wouldn't allow phil hogan to clean my outside toilet that's not a joke i would not allow phil hogan to shovel shite yet this overpaid pampered piece of crap is being lionized by rte lionized by the irish times lionized on social media He's going to survive this because the people behind this, Varadkar or Fadakar, as Thomas, I love Thomas Sheridan's microaggression, Fadakar and Michal Martin, and all of those people behind the scenes, all of those people at the Iraq this dinner, all of them, they want him to survive. The people who make the decisions in RTE, they want Hogan to survive. The people who make the decisions in the Irish Times, they want Hogan to survive. The entire establishment wants Hogan to survive. They are coming. Uh, they are circling the wagons around him. They are circling the wagons around Hogan. And this is a subset of the bigger issue that arose with the Oireachtas Gulf Dinner, namely, and this has been said by me before, that the Oireachtas Gulf Dinner proves that coronavirus isn't real, that it's a scam. Certainly, um, if it was a severe flu, the flu kills, we know that. This is always a tragedy for those who lose a loved one. I'm not in any way trivialising or minimising that, but I'm saying that the need to muzzle everybody, shut down our economy, put in a police state, get rid, trample on our human rights, you know, get children in. This is a particularly sinister thing that arose that I saw today. Some school somewhere, some psychopath in a school decided to get the children in the school to sign a covenant in relation to their compliance with COVID-19 regulations. I can tell them straight away, you know, uh, from my own legal experience, but also my experience in a school, nobody under the age of 18 shall sign a contract or any contract signed by a person under the age of 18 is unenforceable. That's because they're a child. Up to the end of them being 17, they're legally a child. So for a school to ask children to sign what the school is passing off, it's actually not, but passing off as a legally binding contract, isn't just bullshit, but it's duress, it's bullying, it's mind games. But that's what you get in schools. Whether it's primary schools or secondary schools, you get these incompetent psychopaths who have no idea about due process, no idea about the law. These are the first people, by the way, ironically, you know, it's what David Icke refers to as perception deception. These are the first people who bleat on about child protection. And then this particular school is asking children to sign an invidious contract, which is also asking them effectively to grass on their parents. I met some kids yesterday, I met some people in their teens yesterday. I said to them, don't go back to school. If you want to do civil disobedience, if you want to show, you want to give it to the man, just don't go back to school. You don't have to make a song and dance about it the way I don't make a song and dance apart from on social media all the time, about not wearing a mask. I don't go into shops with a sign saying, look at me not wearing a mask. I just, I just refuse to wear a mask. And what I said to the kids was, just refuse to go back to school. It's not going to make any difference. What do you want? You get a shite degree. You go and spend four years in a, a, one of these woke incubators full of people like Ebon Joseph and all, all these ones telling you how evil you are for being a, a white Irish person or how evil you are for being a heterosexual male. Then, you you know, you get a shite degree and fuck knows what. You're up to your eyes in debt and you're ending up working in a cafe? Ah, no, give me a break. Go out and get a decent skill. Follow your heart. Follow the skills that you're good at. If you're good at art, go after that. If you're good at singing, go after that. Because that whole jobs market has gone anyway. The whole thing has gone anyway. So, no, you know, don't go to college. Don't go back to school. But this, you know, to, to, to return to the, the point of this particular video is that Phil Hogan will survive. He will survive. We all remember teachers in school. Anybody who's listening to this will recall teachers in school who got away almost literally with murder. And you'd always say, how the fuck did he or she manage to pull that one off? But it's because the whole establishment of the school and the whole establishment above and beyond the school, including the board of management and the trustee of the school, I understand school structures, well, particularly in terms of secondary schools. There was a whole 
army of people behind them who just did not want them to be in any way reprimanded or sanctioned for their atrocious behaviour. So Phil Hogan will survive. And there's a lot of noise going on on social media. I could have told you that from the start. Phil Hogan will survive. And also we get back to my earlier video, the video, the Irish middle class deserve what they get. You've chosen this, I'd say, to the, to the mainstream who are watching RTE. Just put down your Irish Times for a second and listen to me. You're probably not. Probably not. You, you chose this because you listen to RTE, you read the Irish Times and you vote for Nigel. Phil Hogan is classic for Nigel. You chose this. Don't be complaining about it. Love it. Live it. Own it. Live this dream that you've built for yourselves. When you go into Nolan supermarket in your clogs looking for your vegan 75 gender quinola, you live the dream. On that particular topic, one of the things that I've observed is that the moral indignation The moral indignation of those people, no, I wouldn't call them people, sorry, those beings, they're not people, they're not people. <coughs> moral indignation of all, <coughs> excuse me, all these ones who were haranguing and harassing me for the first while when I would go into the supermarket to buy, you know, things to stop my parents and me from starving to death when I would go in there. That has gone, and I observed yesterday, Monday, Monday the 24th of August 2020, I observed that the people are walking more slowly, that they're shuffling and that their shoulders are stooped. This is because they are humiliated. They know what has been done to them. Okay, they, they probably haven't analysed it in those terms, but at a subliminal level, at a subconscious level, they know what has been done. The excellent filmmaker, one of the best ever, David Lynch, deals primarily with the subliminal and he deals with the subconscious you could call him a cinematographic a cinematographic cross between Jung and Freud so a Freudian and Jungian thing is happening with these people and again we're getting back to school these are the ones in school who never stood up for their own rights and who condemned and laughed at and scorned anyone who did They've turned into adults now and they're smug and they're self-righteous and they have big ideas about themselves. Thomas Sheridan has opinions on how to deal with them. My opinion of how to deal with them is to be, if you if one must encounter them, avoid them. Thomas says avoid, avoid. Thomas is right. But if one must, unfortunately, encounter, encounter these beings, be as condescending and as arch and as aristocratic as you possibly can. Treat them like the shit that they are. They're behaving like shit. Treat them that way. You don't owe them an explanation. You don't owe them politeness if they're not going to be polite to you. I mean, personally, the issue of accosting an individual in a supermarket who might have some kind of illness, you don't know a person's background. To go up and condemn a person for not wearing a mask is monstrous. I mean, it would be monstrous for a member of staff in a supermarket to do that. But for a shopper in a supermarket not to be able to mind their own business is monstrous. But... That arises from anger at themselves. They know they've been duped. They know they've been humiliated. They know they lack the courage to say no. They know they lack the courage to not wear a mask. And they know that they don't understand the system enough to take it on. So when they see people like myself coming in, not wearing a mask, it's an immediate defiance to them and it triggers them immediately. The only reason why they're not still doing it when I go into the supermarket now is because they have been sufficiently demoralised by all of this to stop even daring to speak out. And I'll do another video on that particular matter maybe tomorrow.